Hello there and welcome to another episode of Four Times in a Podcast. You join us on Monday the 25th of April. It is just over 24 hours since Celtic were victorious in Dingwall after a 2-0 victory. The goals came from Kyogo who made his first start since Boxing Day and we get a late second from Jota who had set up the first one as well so Danny we'll just get straight into it it was the sort of perfect response that Celtic wanted after last week's cup disappointment as as we had spoke about how we did sort of let last week get them down and then the sort of pre-match build up to it and should sort of maintain that the cup game would have no effect on the league game because it didn't really affect the league at all and I think the first half performance especially but just in general the manner of victory sort of backed up everything that Ange and the players had been out saying they responded superbly to last week Aye they did and I think you know what you were saying I think you said it in the group chat it was at like half five on Sunday night after the semi-final that you're not going to judge his team until half five next Sunday and I think that was profound words because I, I, I was kind of thinking the same thing is like right now the, the team have earned the, the season they've earned their trust that you give them another week to see if it you know was it a blip or is it something more serious I think you seen yesterday it was a complete not a blip I thought I thought a brilliant yesterday really the, the performance was great my nerves were shattered we'll get me wrong but you can see the media the whole week planting stories about how Celtic's bottle it's a team that's unbeaten in the league since September and you know we've had with, what, four domestic defeats all season three of, only three of them have been in 90 minutes some of the shite that we were getting put up with all week about helicopter Sunday and all this and, and then when they won at Motherwell against a very poor Motherwell team who should have done a lot better in the game the pressure was on and they played the way we did was probably I thought first off we were, we were exquisite I thought the whole team were hungry it should have been about four up but that's been the story of our season really and we've gave teams some absolute downs and yeah the story of our season has been we really could have taken seven Seven, eight, nine, half someday at some point. I thought the fit between the three Japanese boys in the first half was brilliant. I know that he came out and said that he was fatigued in that after playing a full season, moving halfway across the world and jumping into a pretty important run of fixtures for Celtic but I thought he was really good yesterday I thought he was he's, he's kind of levelled out for his first three or four performances don't get me wrong but let's be honest you, you could never really expect him to hit the heights all the time um, especially after the you know it's the long season and that but, but he was brilliant in the first half I thought the interplay between the three of them was great there was a great example of one the one where Maeda just scored it was a great save for the keeper right enough but Kyogo's running through the middle and Maeda's not even in the shot and then three clips later Kyogo's out on the left and Maeda's having a, a shot at goal it was the move was just brilliant and Kyogo could have a hat trick I thought, I thought he was onside that one I thought the players foot played him on setting it off was obviously a bit more nervy for us no for the team the team didn't give you the impression that they were inviting Ross County into the game Ross County are at home they're fourth in the league they're always going to have a go they've not lost at home in the league since Tony Ralston's 114th minute winner and they had territory for about five minutes but you never ever thought oh this is now ah you're thinking to yourself the worst but just because the you know, the time of the season where we are, but the team responded really well, and we were always a team that looked more likely to score a goal. Second goal came, I was delighted for Jota, I thought his cross for Kyogo's goal was, it was outstanding, I thought he was really good, and to get a goal, I just, I was so happy for him, because he took a lot of unnecessary stick last week, I thought he was brilliant this week again, deserved his man of the match, but, um, and defended really solid as well, so, no, I'm really, really um, buzzing with the way it went, and, and four draws for here wins as a league. You say that four draws would guarantee it, hopefully, hey, it doesn't as many as four games to get the points that we need but I, I completely agree with what you're saying I thought the first half we were we were really really good I thought that Jota you, you mentioned there I tweeted out about it because I, I just thought the stick that that boy has taken uh, over the last few weeks that I know it was particularly bad last week after the Rangers game but I, I just thought he was outstanding again I thought he was absolutely pivotal to everything we'd done especially in the first half but even into the second half like he's the one that's uh, creating stuff and eventually gets the second goal that absolutely kills the game and you seen when it went to him and this is a guy who's took a lot of criticism since we came back from the winter break and I, I, I just don't get it I know he had some real highlights in the first uh, half of the season. Like you've, you had, I think, heard in the commentary, it was his fourth assist in like, uh, his last five games. And, and then you had uh, his goal. As I said, it was such a pivotal goal to just kill the game off. Like I, I agree with you. I don't think Ross County were up too much and Joe Hart didn't have much today. But just by the sort of lawyer averages, you sort of worry that, that they're going to get one chance. But Jota, like, I, I don't even think he's got any right to get on the end of the goal. Like, Jackie Marcus obviously puts it and it hits the bar. And Jota's like, his second favourite be a 
mile to get to it ahead of the Ross County defender, but he's just sort of will to get there, puts it in, and as I say, he's he seen what it meant to him, and his interview was great after it. I just thought that he's been, like, I seen him labelled a coward, I seen people say, oh, send him back to Benfica, like he's not going to stay, but like, I thought his interview was very mature as well. He just sort of he was asked about his future, and he, I, thought, I take him at face value that he's just concentrating on uh, getting uh, getting his, his best performances for Celtic at the moment, and then he worry about what happens in the summer. Uh, when it comes and I think I think that's only fair like, I know I've even seen some people sort of have a go at him because he went down to Anfield to watch Benfica in the Champions League but uh, I thought it was again I thought it was just a bit sort of he, he had sort of been turning in out of Whitten Boy for a few weeks there but it would be buzzing that Tierney was up at the semi-final aye of course that's that only works one way you can only it's, it's only Celtic fans that can have that one childhood love like this if Jot as a boy who's obviously came through Benfica ranks and always been a Benfica player and fan so of what happened did it to him to go two hours down the train or whatever it was uh, but no I was I was delighted like just for the team in general like the uh, as you said Danny I, I, I say that I wasn't going to judge him until after that because as you mentioned they've not lost in the league since September it was I know I've had sort of disappointments at St Mirren and uh, Hibs away and that but like I thought the team had earned the sort of the chance to put things right and I, I thought they did that like Kyogo it was great to see him back like you you speak about Jota's cross and you're right today it was a fantastic cross in but Kyogo's got absolutely I hate to be hey, have that sort of hang time and hey, to finish it like you know a few people were calling it sort of Larson esque but it was just it's sort of one of the things that you've been missing seeing from Kyogo like, obviously he's been injured for hey, the last four months so like you sort of forget how good he is in there for somebody that's not the tallest but hey, he obviously has a great chance hey, well, he's one that he sort of scuffs that hits the bar and then the one that he should have finished when I think it's Matt O'Reilly's shot that gets hey, spilled by the keeper and hey, Kyogo just sort of puts it maybe in the one place that the keeper can hey, can stop it, but even the Maeda chance, I thought Maeda done superbly and he, he looks to put it across the keeper but I think the defender actually gets a bit of a block on it as well uh, and on another day you've got a similar scene to Celtic Park where you're getting in 3-0 up at half time against Ross County and funnily enough we probably should have been against 10 men as well because that Callahan should have at the very least seen two yellow cards in the first 5-6 minutes but uh, Kevin Clancy oh, uh, as you would expect from a uh, sort of refs in Scotland let him away with one which was no surprise after last week although it was sort of pleasing to see that somebody did I'd get booked for stopping Joe Hart taking a, a goal kick or a free kick, whatever it was. But no, delighted with the way the team responded. Tony, I know you were, you were out yesterday and you were in, seemed to be enjoying it. Danny sort of alluded to it. There was certain uh, pundits who yeah, remain nameless who were sort of questioning Celtic's ball, saying that Celtic's ball had went and that this title was going to go all the way to the, the wire. But how did you, what did you make of uh, yesterday's performance? Unless you talk about that daft old bastard Kevins. I think you look at these guys, I mean, they're just out to click big and annoy fans. I mean, both sides of the divide, and they've done it for years. They're very good at it, and they come up with these stupid uh, clickbait articles. Or, for example, he came out and says that he knew Stephen Glass was a disastrous appointment for Aberdeen when it was announced, but he also had Aberdeen finishing second above Celtic when he'd done his pre season's prediction. So it shows he's, um, he's just out to antagonise people. And here, look at me, I've fucking a bit big time and I'm talking about him on here so but no I think everybody knows the Scottish media whatever you want to call it sports media it's, it's hopeless it's bad it's full of people who really just don't know what they're talking about so unlike our good selves here at Pod Tims I think we all knew Celtic were, were doing fine and I, I, I was not surprised with the first performance I thought they set about it like a team that have everything still to play for that still know that they, they still need to get points to win the league and I thought they were extremely professional we could have been 6-0 up at half time I wonder if there's going to be the head of referees coming out to obviously back us up because Kyogo was onside for his goal and was ruled offside so I look forward to hearing from him I'm sure he'll be out um, in support of Kyogo so he should have had that goal um, so no I, I, I thought it was a very good performance look at 1-0 you're very close to winning the title there's going to be nerves but I don't remember Ross County really doing it I think Carter Vickers maybe stopped a shot uh, it was a good slide tackle he's a, a great player he wins a bit in the air uh, the guy Callahan that looks like Arthur Selby he should have been sent off the one of McGregor's a booking at least Clancy lets the play go on again Clancy unfortunately for him he isn't biased he's, he's not got that excuse he's just fucking shite he's just hopeless Um so, aye, that was just it. But you can't expect these things. I mean, the VAR won't solve bookings that go amiss. I think that'll still be a thing next season, unfortunately, and stupid decisions. But I thought the team kept going. A lot of chances missed. I mean, Kyogo could have probably had a hat-trick. Uh, Maida could have scored. Um, 
but we were always in full control. Some of the movement, Bikyogo was outstanding. I think when he scored that goal, everybody just gave it the old lab as last in esque which is a massive compliment to Kyogo. And it was great to see him scoring again. Um, he's been out for so long, and obviously he's just coming back. And I think we all said if he could come back for the split, he'll certainly play his part. And he's done that. Um, I'm sure we'll go into the debate who should start up front on Sunday, um, which a couple of months ago it would have been. Kyogo, but now Giacomakis has been such a, a major boost for us that it's not as clear cut as that, which is great. It's great to have options. Um, I thought Greg Taylor had a good game yesterday. I thought he was really good. Jota, he seems to be getting a lot of stick. I was in the pub yesterday and the guy next to me was just giving him all sorts of abuse. And for anybody that was sitting next to me in a the pub, they'll probably be laughing listening to this. I, I thought I was going to have my head. My hangover was getting worse than the way the game went on. But he does great to go in the end. It's actually a very good throw in and great movement by Abada in the build up. For Alston throws it into him. It's a good bit of movement, good kind of throw by, by Alston. And then Jack Amakis is unlucky. He's in the right place. And Jota dives in for the finish. And that's it. I mean, six points clear with four to go for one on Sunday. We're, we're the champions. It's as simple as that. They, they can't catch the goal difference. So it's exciting. I think it's good to put the disappointment of the cup behind us. It's all about the league now. I think everybody knows that the one we all want is the league. I mean, if you look back, I mean, I don't I need to look back to our episodes during when Levy beat us and we drew with the United, but I don't think we ever really turned in a manager. I think we, that time we were root players and I think we, we were quite lenient on him and saying we can see what he's building and, and look, this is, he told you the time, he says, um, I enjoy this part here, I enjoy the, the bit where we're under pressure and I think at the last 20 games we've won 24 and drawn four. I mean, that's a, a tremendous amount of consistency um, and again, for a team that are blown out their ass in the 60th minute, they've managed to score late, which is even more amazing. I think there's still people in this country that think we're shy and referees are helping us and we're blown out our ass and a lot of uh, mad takes in certain forums that um, are always good for a laugh. Um, but no, I, I, thought, I thought it was a very professional performance. Um, there was pressure. I mean, it's, it's easy for people to say, oh, the league's done, the league was done anyway. I mean, Frost County beat us and it wasn't done, is it? So there's still a lot of pressure. So for the for the team to go out and play the way they did, I thought they were very good at the time. As I say, shape myself was guzzling the Moretti for fun. So, but no, delighted and um, I can't wait for Sunday. Another big game, big challenge. So they'll be looking to put the the cup fight, uh, cup semi final right, and hopefully they they're in for a tough game on Thursday and before they play us. Hi, well, come on, it's Sunday in a minute, but just before we do, Andy, you've just joined us. Uh, what did you make of yesterday? Who caught your eye? Um, it was, I, I caught the end of what a couple of these were saying there. I completely agree. It was a, a dominant performance. Um, I, it's only finished 2-0, but it really could have been 3-4-5. It, it could have been a doing. Um, as has been mentioned, there was chances, like Kilgore hitting the bar, and I am the one made I had as well, but, Chances are there, um, but there was no any point in that game, even when it was 1 0 up until I think Jota scores by the 85th minute, 86th minute, if memory serves me. At no point during sort of Kyogo's goal and, and us scoring the second, there was a fearful of them, them scoring. Um, I think I, I think I vaguely remember them having maybe one shot and goal. Um, and again, like Callahan and just running a bit booting cunts for the sake of it, just a dreadful football player, um, an imitation of a football player, but. Again, just the, the attitude of the team to bounce back, they really didn't let it affect them. Um, there was obviously a lift for the fans and, and the players for Kyogo to come back in, gets a goal um, in true Kyogo fashion. Uh, just delighted for you getting a goal and an assist. He's been, like one of you said there, it was turned into a wee bit of a whipping boy. Some people were starting to doubt him, just coming away with these sort of nonsense statements. But we've said it before, a lot of people struggle to have the bottle for, for title races and Things like that, and I think that's where some of these comments come from. Um, just like um, the, the ball's crashing a wee bit at times, but delighted for Yota to get that, the assist. The, the cross in's fucking delightful, um, as well as obviously Kyogo getting up there. It was it was quite arson esque the way he goes about and gets so high off the gun, and the header's brilliant, but the ball ends utterly tremendous. Um, and then again, Yota just to get the goal. Um, it was very sort of Scott Sinclair like coming in at the back post and just getting ahead of the defender. Um, Brilliant to see that for one of your wide men. But across the team, I thought just a really, really assured performance. Um, Taylor, again, just going about his business. I thought he dealt with any sort of potential threat that they had um, reasonably well. I mean, Charles Cook is obviously their danger man, but we, we kept him quiet. He was sort of 
gone from side to side to um, try to get against both, both full-backs and get a wee run at them, but I thought we handled it perfectly. Um, just, just the attitude of the team's a big thing that stuck out for me. As I say, we could have done them for three, four, five, but the attitude's the one that sticks out for me, Dan, just to come right back for that. Team hadn't changed too much. Um, obviously, Kyogo comes in for the start. O'Reilly comes in and, and Ralston comes in for Juranovic, but the base is very much the same, but really didn't let it affect them, didn't let it affect their mentality um, and just get right back to it. And that was obviously a big fear for people and legitimately so. Like, you can understand why um, people were concerned that it might have an impact, but it just showed you sort of what, what the manager is building. Um, and, and it was good to see. And again, we didn't get drawn into it. Um, we fucking just thugs like Callahan that just wanted to run about and put people for fun. Then I get drawn in here. I don't even think we get a card, which says a lot about the team. Um, just that sort of mentality to, to go about playing football. There was a couple of rough tackles, went in on bodies, but then I get drawn in here. Went about our business, get the job done. Um, and again, just keep it going until this league's mathematically done, which is what the team looked to be doing. Yep, definitely. Can't really disagree with what you've said there, Andy. Uh, Danny, we'll just move on to it this Sunday, the 1st of May. It sees the final Glasgow derby of the season. Uh, Celtic have won two, lost one, and then lost the other one in the cup in extra time. How are you feeling going into this one? And how, how big a game is it, given that if Celtic win it, the, the league's essentially done. When you look at Celtic's superior goal difference, it would put them nine points clear with nine to play for. So but I know a lot of fans seem to think the league's already done, but... Do you think that puts an added pressure on Celtic or perhaps even more on Rangers just because it would all but seal it? I'm going to be honest, I think the pressure's on Celtic, Mare, I think. Um, and there's no much pressure on Celtic. It's it's going to be an odd one because the league's obviously still there. If they were to win, there'd be three points in it with three to play and you'd think there's still kind of what to play for. But um, So you would think, well, Rangers need to win, so the pressure's on them. Celtic just don't really need to get beat, so... But I think they've kind of. I think half of their fans have chucked the league. Um, and I, I think their team selection might be key. And I think if they don't take a doing in Germany, I think they might drop four or five, like maybe six, seven, eight other players. You might see a. You might see that if they start that front three that they did on Saturday against us, and they might take a two one. But um, I don't know. It's. I don't know what I think. I, I, I think Celtic will beat them, but then. I thought that last week as well. Um, I just get, I just think Angela, the team fired right up for it. I think you'll see a start similar to the one we got in February. Uh, Sarah Park will be buzzing. The crowd will be right up for it. They'll not get a minute's piece on the ball. Four players and I, uh, I think there's a lot more. For, I think there's a lot more for Celtic to play for in the game. I think that's maybe the answer I'm trying to come to. Um, we, you know, we're at home. We should be setting the pace. Um, it go nine points clear effectively. I mean, maybe be dormy, uh, we turn for the golfers. But knowing that you win and the superior goal difference just about clinches it, and then all you need to do next week is draw. You know, like you draw not reach in a bottom game, you've won the league. It would be it would be brilliant, but it'd be really good to beat them. I think it'd be good to win the last game of the season. I think that over the four games so far this season, we've definitely been. Um, I think we've shown that we're a far better team than them over all the games and it would be good to win. I know they're just kind of two each. Um, it would be good to kind of win the last one and have a winning record with them this season. And the fans deserve it as well because, you know, they've been brilliant this season and yesterday they were outstanding again as well. And uh, Parkhead's going to be a cauldron. Um, it might not be as vicious and might be a few less drunk and heats in the world at the quarter to eight kick-off in February, but... Celtic Park will be wrong on Saturday, Sunday, and I can't wait for it because um, the team are going to get back right on for the start. And if they don't respond to that, then maybe there's something up with them. But I hope the Celtic team will come out flying, and I think Celtic will be all right. Yep. Tony, what are you thinking about this one? Well, there's pressure on both teams for us if we win. We've won the league for the champions. I mean, that is it. For the goal difference if we win will be 20 plus minimum. Um, with three games to go, nine points, so it would be done. So there's there's pressure on both teams. Obviously, they were expected to win the league. This and was meant to be Pedro Cucina 2.0. It's not really what to it. So there's pressure on them as well to kind of delay it and try and put us under more pressure. But we're going into the last three games. But for me, 
I take a lot of keen encouragement for the manager. I just feel Stanley says he'll have them fired up. They'll be well drilled. We'd we'll get the week off. I know it didn't work well the last time and we didn't really perform, but I'm assuming Leipzig is going to present a different challenge to them than a 10-man Braga side. Um, as Danny says, but if Leipzig can, can give them a, a pasting, they might be a bit demoralised coming to Celtic Park and the fans will be well up for it. The manager and the players, they know what's the state. This is... This is it now. This is it's all good and well seen since February. I will win the league, but this is really time to go out and show. Look, this is this is a league we've taken it back. We want to have won ten leagues out the last eleven. So, it's, I'm just excited for it. I mean, most case scenario, you lose. You're still in a very strong position um, to, to still win the league. You still, if you beat Hearts, you're you're nearly there anyway. So, um, just excitement for me. Um, I think there's probably a lot of pressure on their manager. He's, he's come under a lot of flack recently. If he was to go to the semi-final and lose to us, then that would be two competitions in the space of three days. So um, I think the pressure's on him. Then he still needs to win the Scottish Cup. So if we can if we can get the win on Sunday and become the champions, it'll be a, it's just an, an unbelievable season, um, an incredible achievement. And for me, probably one of the the best seasons in, in my lifetime. So nothing's a given. They're not a, a, a bad side. They've obviously done very well in Europe. They beat us the last time. I think we need to just target target Taverniers. Pin him back, make sure he's not getting space to fire 3,000 crosses into the box. If we do that, we'll get on okay. So um, exciting. Um, in terms of who we play up front, no, I, I don't have a clue. I uh, wouldn't like to have that choice. Jack Amakis is such a great physical presence against him. Kyogo's a, a very talented player. So... Um, Hopefully everybody comes through this week with any niggles. Um, O'Reilly needs to start for me. Um, if Atati's feeling OK, then he would start with McGregor. And then I'd probably go Maida, Jota, and I didn't say Kyogo. I can't even start with Kyogo. Uh, and then you'd be like Abada, Rogic, Turnbull, Jackie Marcus. Um, he come on the second half. So, um, aye, the, the squad's in a good position now, so... It's going to be a long week. I felt last week fucking dragged in. See the day of the game, waiting for half two kickoffs. Who the fuck came up with that idea? Jesus. I felt like I was waiting forever. And it was just everybody talking about the semi final, where it went wrong, you know, if it was torture. So uh, this week will no doubt be the same. But I'm looking forward to it. Um, hopefully, this is it. And we, we... See, to be fair, Tony, that game was only half two because it was meant to be directly after uh, Rangers played, which, I mean, which was. Unbelievable because the, the league that Disney moved games for Rangers moved a game for Rangers. I know, but well, you know that they've not any help this season, so maybe they don't get any help when the league finished fucking at 10 o'clock on Thursday night in 2008. But aye, I'm not good. <laughs> I can't be asked talking about that. Hopefully, it's not done them any help at all and they get scudded. Um, but aye, it'll be a long week, long build up. Um, but no, I think last week was we touched on at the start. The, the press in this country want Celtic to, to lose so they can come up with narratives and. I think a lot of them know they're very close to looking like complete tools with their original um, predictions. I mean, what was Hugh uh, Keevan saying? And stands for absolutely not good enough after, what, for a couple of months? I mean, just determined to, to stick the boot into the guy and just be fucking snide and whatever else. So it's quite good to see them getting a bit back. Um, and other ones done it as well. I mean, Chris Boyd, I think he says fucking 10 minutes after Ange was unveiled that he should chuck it, he should walk away. It's an absolute mental case, he's in the Scottish media, but it's what you come to expect. I um, don't know, I'm, I'm kind of just ranting and raving here as I do. Um, is it, you want a prediction after me? No, I'll get me and Andy's previews before we get any predictions, but I, I, I sort of agree with you. I think the, the pressure is, uh, it's got to be more on Celtic because, as Danny said, I think, 95% of them have chucked the league and uh, of, I don't know how much that means because I think 95% had chucked the Scottish Cup as well and then Celtic sort of had a bit of an off day which uh, let them in but I think the fact that they're in Europe like I, I was trying to think of this and I, I can't really see a result on Thursday that sort of helps them get in it because I think they can either get thumped and then they're under real pressure to uh, come to Celtic Park and stop us all but sail in the league or they can get a pot, sort, sort of positive result, whether that be a draw or a win. Like, and then I, I agree with Danny. I think they probably would come to Celtic Park and rest a few players. And as much as they are going on about this uh, European run, if they come here and take a doing, then I don't think that would do them any favours in terms of uh, getting the fans behind them for the second leg. But I think that 
I, I think just be how calm Ange has been in the fullness of this season, to be honest. I think that there's there's massive pressure on Celtic, but at the same time, even if the worst happens and we do lose, we're in a massively strong position just because of the foundations that Ange and his team have built. And we've now got that leeway like this. Like We, we spoke about it last week, how if you'd asked any Celtic fan if they'd, they'd rather won at Ibrox or the Cup semi-final, it would have been Ibrox. And this is the reason why, because you're now going to enter this game with that sort of a wee bit of leeway that you, you can afford to draw points, whether it be a draw or worst comes to it and you do get beat, you've got that a sort of a manoeuvrability a, in terms of still being in the driving seat. But I think that the team will be right up for it, obviously. I, I I agree with what Danny says as well. I think that it won't be as hostile possibly as February just because it being an early kick off on a Sunday and obviously they will have some sort of support at Celtic Park eh, this weekend. But I still think you have a great atmosphere and the the team will be cheered from the first minute to the last and they'll just be out there searching, eh, looking to push the players on to that extra yard and that extra eh, step in terms of getting out on. I, I agree. I'm just sort of repeating a lot of what you used to have said. I think if you can finish this season having that sort of winning record with them, it's sort of massive. Eh, but at the same time, as long as we go there and have a good, like, just play our game. Our game at Celtic Park, we've been superb. I know we've had the draw with Levy and the eh, draw with Dundee United. But apart from that, we've been flawless pretty much eh, at home. And there's every chance that we'll extend that. And look, three of the last four games that eh, the league are at Celtic Park. So what it, our form should sort of back us up in terms of... Eh, make sure that we do get ourselves towards that league title, but it's, it's, it's the obviously a massive game. It's never not a massive Andy, how are you feeling about it? Uh, just when you were talking about who the pressure's made on, I was just sitting thinking about it and about the game. I mean, I don't... Dave, listen, they obviously convinced themselves at one point that the league doesn't matter um, after they realised they'd made an arse it. But just when I was sitting thinking there... I mean, if they manage a result on Thursday, then obviously they need to come and play us, and that's going to be in their mind, and I agree, you would likely see a weakened team for them. I think they've conceded the league as well, but the, the, the other one of that is, if, if he does that and they take a doing, that's heavy, heavy pressure. I mean, regardless of what he does, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be very surprised if they went and beat Leipzig, right? But I think that game's going to have a big bearing on Sunday. Uh, I, really, I really do. Um... It's because uh, I mean they can they can't afford to take a do enough to like at any point. It doesn't matter where the league's at. Doesn't matter if they fucking win the league with twenty points, they still couldn't afford to turn up and take a do. Um fans just don't don't stand for it in games like this. Um so I, I, I do think it's gonna it's obviously gonna play a factor and it's gonna be something that comes to their mind because they're gonna need some sort of fucking deflection tactic when when we win the league and take the title. That's ultimately what it's going to come down to, um, because they've made a rip roaring country, and like like Tony says, Andrew's meant to be a diddy. That was meant to be uh, the banter years as they were crying it. They were shouting about how he was going to be Cushinia and all that shit. And now he's sitting top of the league. Could be to the boot, could be about to go nine points clear against them. We what three games to go after that? I, I think that's that says so much. Um, and they can sort of pretend all they want, but as it stands right now, it's like I've got a title, a, a cup in the bag. Um, no more stones throw away for having a title in the bag and guaranteeing ourselves Champions League football again getting into next season um, but they were sort of pretend to get into the last stages of any competition without actually winning anything as well than that and means more but it does not so it's I don't know I think Thursday will be interesting just to see what happens after the game um, and I mean if they take any more injuries as well you're going to see implications um, but it's Again, the alternative to that is the pressure zone is um, because we need to get it done. Um, but I think there's the mentality of the team, I, I don't really think at this point of of getting any right to doubt or question it. Um, I think it's pretty bulletproof. Um, I think we've seen that. It's the way we bounce back again um, is, is enough for me. It would, I could have even understood if we put into that game against Ross County and sort of staggered out the line to a 1-0, a 1-0 win with a late goal or something and then you're wondering, oh, is it, is it maybe getting to the team a wee bit? But it was a complete opposite. I know it was only 2-0, but it was the performance itself that actually impressed. 
um, the way they went about their business, as I've said. But I uh, get into that game. It's uh, I'm I was caught as as same as Danny. I was confident going into the cup the cup game. Um, but listen, it's football. These things can happen. Sometimes it's just know your day. Sometimes one too many players in your team don't turn up. Um, and 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 you get caught out. But that's what happens. That's just the way the game goes. Sometimes, um, it will happen to fucking better teams in Celtic across football and across the season of football where they just don't turn up and pay the price in a cup. It's one of football. That's what can happen. Um, but I'm again. I'm I'm confident going into the game. I think we've got a better team than them. I think there's a better squad. Um. And and I think we'll show it. Uh, it's even about like you say. I think I think the atmosphere. I think there's every chance it could be just as good as it was at the last one. Um, fans are right up for us. We've had to sit and listen to their fucking shite for COVID FC for a full year about how they were the best team on earth and they were going to go and win fucking everything. And all oh, just all this fucking nonsense. Um, and like I say, I, I think fans are really up for it. I think the way the manager sort of brought us all back together and. The way he speaks and the way he goes about his business, and I think people are bought in, um, and that's going to play a factor in the crowd. And I think as much as we all want to win your Celtic fans, I think away from that, I think we all want them to succeed just as I get up, you know, just to that more. But to the fucking idiots like you, Kevin's all the fucking gutter media in this country and all that fucking big idiot and half talks what sacked by Christmas. Not the fans are all behind that as well, and I think that will play into the atmosphere um, because this is like Tony says this. If you go nine points clear with three games left, it's it's done. Um, I mean, they they've already had me. It's nice to them. I've conceded it already, but this really is the sort of final nail in the coffin for the league title. If we go out and done them, so I, I I'm buzzing for it. I think the fans will be right up for it. I think we will see another atmosphere that that can rival the last one, and, and hopefully we get the result to go with it. I certainly hope so. I think that was sort of. If it, and I was sort of complimenting the February atmosphere. I think it was just one of the most special ones I've been at. Like I don't know if it was just because it was a midweek one but uh, hopefully it is as good on Saturday, uh, Sunday even uh, because that would just obviously aid Celtic in their quest to uh, get the victory but Danny I'll just take your sort of predicted team like Tony's already alluded to, he thinks that he would go with Kyogo, I think there's no too many question marks in the team uh, I think you have, you have sort of if you've got Joe Hart, most likely going to be Ralston due to Iranovic's injury uh, Carter Vickers, Starfield Taylor are nailed on uh, Cal McGregor as well, Jota, Maeda. So there's only really a few positions that I think are up for debate. Who, who, how would you line up? Because what, one thing that did impress me yesterday was how well I actually thought Anthony Ralston had a very good first half. Uh, so I think he will continue it right back. But the the thing I was going to bring up there was I thought that uh, Jackie Marcus and Tom Rogic actually done very well when they came off the bench and really helped to see out the game. I would play Jackie Marcus and Kyogo. I would, I would take Maeda. All Jota, I think it's a flip between the two. Um, but I would mm, be tempted to play Jota on the right because um, he's cross yesterday. Uh, and I'd have Kyogo and Jackie Marcus. I think we need Jackie Marcus's physicality. I think we, we look lost without it in that League Cup, yeah, the Scottish Cup semi final. And it's hard to wrap my head because he's been brilliant for us and he's been great at us. Especially the last five or six weeks, and I thought he was probably one of a few Celtic players that came out that game with pass marks the other week. But um, I'd play Kyogo after left. I know he done that at Ibrooks and with Edward, and it didn't work, but Kyogo did put a ball across for Edward to score um, for two years out, which Edward missed. So it's not as if Kyogo didn't play well there. Um, but I wouldn't have him on the left. I'd have him doing what he wants in the middle. Doing what he wants. I'd either, I'd either be tempted to play him, play him there or play him instead of Hitati and play Rogic and McGregor in the midfield with Kyogo just buzzing about. I, I, I want them to find a way to get Kyogo and Jackie Max to the team because I think we need Jackie Max's physicality and I think Kyogo's drew a big game against him. And maybe he starts Kyogo, if, in my likelihood he'll start Kyogo and bring Jackie Max on. But I'd love him to find a way to play both of them. Um, whether it, I don't think they'll go to a 3 5 2, but I'd love him to find a way because I think with the space that Jackie Marcus creates against him, I think that's perfect for a player like Kyogo. Um, we've seen the joy that Maeda got against him at Ibrooks. He should have scored two. He was unlucky. We won. He was brought down for an hour. 
And I think if you've got that, if you're creating that space for Kyogo, I think you just get rewards. Um, so I would go Hart, Ralston, Vickert, Vickers, Starfield, Taylor, I'd be hard to push, but I, I go Rogic, McGregor and Hitati. Um, I think, because um, I thought Rogic played well yesterday. I, I really like O'Reilly though. I really like O'Reilly. I think I think O'Reilly would be unlucky to get drafted actually, because I thought he was excellent in the, the last game at Parkhead, but Rogic has got good form against him this season. He was really good. I know he had an half game in the Scottish Cup, but he was very, very good at Ibrox, and they're terrified there. Um, and then I would, I would I'd play Kyogo, Jackie Madison, Draw up front. And I just think with the space that Jackie Madison and Rogic particularly create against them, if they say they were to put two men on Rogic again and try and pull them off the park, and you've got Jackie Madison on there to bully their two centre halves whilst they're trying to bully Rogic. Kyogo would be in dream he'd just have too much space and he's better on the ball than Maeda is so I would, that would be my team I would I would just go right for it with Jackie Maris and Kyogo I like that because I, I was actually thinking about that earlier I was, I'd love to see if some sort of a uh, lineup or formation that Ange manages to work the two of them in because I, I agree with what you say I think they would both complement each other so well like whether it be the one where you've got McGregor and say Rogic or Hitati and then Kyogo sort of in a sort of free roll behind uh, Jack and Marcus because I, I think I could see the uh, arguments for that working just because uh, I, like both of them actually seem to have spells in the game where they'll drop deep to sort of win the ball or to hold the ball up and if you've got that happening while well, the other one's sort of getting in behind I think they, they could probably interchange quite well even though they're obviously pretty different types of players but I, I think it would be brilliant if we could get the two of them in I think it would be I know what you're saying about Maeda, but I thought he was he was excellent at Ibrox and sort of, like I've seen some sort of uh, analysis since the Cup semi-final and there was a few times that he, that it was sort of identified that Jota and Abada sort of didn't, just, just didn't pick up at Maeda's runs uh, when he was in like clear space. Like I know it's screenshots of like at one moment in time, but it, it did look like Maeda was just sort of a bit unlucky that he wasn't fed in on a few occasions at Hamden, so I, I, I'd be quite happy for him to uh, start, but I, I, I don't know how it'll be, like, because like, before the semi-final, I was all about starting Kyogo if both were fit, but I, I agree, I, I just think Jackie Marcus was a massive miss at Hamden, and even again yesterday when he came off the bench, like, you've seen how effective he can be, and obviously it's his shot that leads to Jota putting in the rebound, like, at I just think you need to find a space for Jack and Marcus, but at the same time, I think you still need to find a space for Hugo. So, I if we could sort of get some sort of uh, lineup where we can accommodate both, then I, I'd be all for that. No matter who drops it, it, it would probably you'd probably have somebody on the bench who you were saying it was harsh about. But I, I think that the two of them have got the the tools that they can really put Rangers to the sword on Sunday. But Andy, if you get anything different, you'd add to the lineup, and then we'll start taking predictions. Uh, I mean, I think they could keep on the back four, pick themselves. Um, obviously, you're an individual, so I still be it. So it'll be Ralston at right back, but the heart cut like a stuff out and Taylor pick themselves. Um, I mean, McGregor's obviously going to be in there, and I think Hattati will be. Next to them, it'll be obviously Rogic or O'Reilly. Something's telling me O'Reilly might have just played his way in to the thinking. Um, I, I, listen, they are fucking terrified of. A Rogic, um, but I think O'Reilly might just have played his way, his way in and, and maybe be deserving of a start and I wouldn't be disappointed with either of them I think they're both tremendous football players that um, that bring similar but, but different sort of attributes to the game um, the front three, I get I get the thinking we want Kyogo and Jackie Marcus in the park but I don't know, I, we're not going to sacrifice Maida, I don't think it's, I think if he does do it it will be Yota that sort of sacrificed at that point. I think it would be him who would come out. Um, we've seen we seen the joy you go to Maeda when when he pins to having to having your back. Um, we've seen that, and that's I think that's probably the error we made that we we put him through the middle at, at Hamden instead of putting him out left. Um, because he offers so much going back as well. Because there will be times where they're they're in possession. That's just just the way that game goes at times. Um, so I think if if he does do that, then it will be sort of Kyogo going my either side of Jackie Marcus, and probably all, all three of them will, would have a sort of a, no no complete free roll, but they'll have more sort of leeway to to make moves and and sort of 
interlink and interchange at times. Um, I think he would trust them to do that. I think he does trust um, certain players in the team would be capable of that. And that's, so I don't let it be lost either. Jackie Marcus works his fucking arse off as well, um, just as much. It's maybe no notice because people tend to see sort of bigger players as a, as a target man, if you like, but he's, he's got so much to his game um, and he, he really does fucking knock his panning. Um, he's work ethic and he's work great and he's just as effective in the press um, for us. But I don't know, I, I'd, be, I'd be surprised if he does that. I, I reckon he goes with, he goes with Kyogo, Yacht and Maeda as a front three. Um, I think Kyogo's goal probably been the, the difference maker. Um, I think if he'd come off against um, Ross County without scoring, then it was it would have likely been Jackie Marcus coming back in. But I think he's Google's just sort of showing the point that he's whether he's a hundred percent fit or no, he's he, he's he's got, he's got the goals again. Um, I think that'll be the start. And like I say, we're so much we're so, just in a such far better place to have to be able to turn to. If it is him that starts in Jack and Marcus on the bench, if it is O'Reilly that starts in Rogic is on the bench, such a better place um, to be turning to them. But I, it's, I think that'll be the front three. I think that's really the place we will see changes. Um, or there could be a wee surprise flung up. Um, but no, I, I, I don't think so. Um, as I say that, I reckon it'll be it'll be on my either side of Kyogo. Aye, it'll be interesting to see. Hey, Andy, you were last to gauge your line up there, so I'll, I'll take your prediction first. What do you think the score's going to be? I'm going to go I'm between 3 0 and 3 1. I don't know why, but um, I, kind of, I, don't, I don't know. I just feel as if they'll maybe get a wee, I don't know, fucking penalty or something. Something stupid. It'll be a, it'll be a goal for nothing. It'll be like a deflection or fucking something just completely daft. Yeah, uh, like somebody fucking somebody leathers the ball for five yards and it hits a hole and the ref gives a penalty. Something stupid. I could see them getting a goal, but I see us just being incredibly comfortable aside for that and scoring three. So we'll go for three one. Aye, that would that wouldn't surprise me though. At, at time of recording, we don't know who the referee is going to be on Sunday, but I don't know. Hopefully it's Bobby Madden. Bobby Dino is the referee. The referee will be a fucking idea either way. Hopefully it's Madden. I think that would help the atmosphere. It's something turn that up a few notches, but. Tony, I'll take your prediction. Uh, tune out to the leather belts. I'll go for a Kyogo double. Um, I think Everton's in our favour getting into it. As I say, it's tough to go to Leipzig. They're a good team. Um, regardless of the result, I think he says um, they might be resting players. They might be demoralised, maybe you know, in between. So, looking forward to it. Uh, as I say, it's 2 now. I think the, the fans will be right up for it. Um, I'm sure everybody else is. So I, if we win and you want to get your photo taken with me, it's £5 and a bottle of Moretti and I'll probably be doing the Gallagher after the game. So I hope everybody enjoys. Danny, what's your prediction? Um, I think Celtic will either be free not up after 20 minutes or it will finish a one each draw. Um, no, I think I think Celtic will win. I think it will be too good. I think we've got too, too much to play for. Uh, crowd will be right up for it. And I think it'll be, I think I'll be free nothing, and I think Jack and Marcus will get two. No, 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 no. Kyogo will get two, and Jack and Marcus will get the other. He, the two of them will get the goals that they deserve this season. Hopefully, and my prediction, well, apart from that, I don't think to, anybody will take Tony up on his offer. Uh, is that Celtic? Oh, I, I think that they'll. This, this could be expired before. Uh, or he's listening if he's a listening on Friday or Saturday I think they're going to take a doing on Thursday and I think the Celtic are going to make it two doings in three days for them because I, I think they're going to do you know what I think it's going to be very similar to the February game and I think we'll be 3 now up at half time but I think different from that day I think we'll keep the foot down and I, I don't think Ange will play Kyogo and Jack and Marcus and I think whatever one comes off the bench will add the, the, a double in the second half to make it Celtic 5 Rangers now and put his Within very touching this and we'll have <laughs> five nuts. I'm telling you, I, I, they'll do it, man. They'll do it. Like, it should have been that in February, but we, we took a fucking pass of the gas. But I, 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 I might end up on fucking compilations. I, I made a good one after we beat them at Ibrox. So uh, if we get fucked on Sunday, then I deserve to be put on one. But I uh, 5 0 Celtic for my prediction. Well, if you're right, then. um I'll buy you a Marietti and pay you £5 for a phone. Oh, well, there you go. 
<laughs> right, well, enjoy the game. Yes, everybody enjoy the game. Uh, we will speak to you at some point. Let's be honest, it probably won't be Sunday just because we'll hopefully be out celebrating all day after a Celtic victory. But we'll be back early next week with a full review and a look towards the Hearts game, which will hopefully be the one that we can clinch the league title officially. But we will speak to you next week. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.